What is going on guys, Alex here, and today we're doing something that you guys have been asking for for absolutely ages, and that you guys have been overhyped about since I made my last video. Basically, we're doing a Hackintosh today. Links to everything you'll need to actually do this yourself is down in the description, so go and check that out. And then you can pretty much make your own bootable Mac and Windows PC, so you can actually have Mac OS Sierra. Without any further ado, let's actually get into it. So I'm going to move my camera over there, I'm going to go sit over there myself, and I will just show you guys through the, every single stage of how you actually do this. Okay, so guys, to actually get this working, what you're going to need is a working Mac or Hackintosh or basically anything that runs Mac OS so you can run the Mac apps. So once you have your USB flash drive plugged into your computer, make sure it's 8GB or more. You can go to the other folder and then disk utility on the Mac that you're using. This is the drive that I'll be using. It's a 32GB drive. So you're going to go to this section of the drive. You're going to press erase and then you're going to go, I'm just going to call it Mac OS boot. And then you're going to put it as master boot record on Mac OS on Mac OS extended brackets journaled. So then I'm just going to press erase and then it's just literally going to do everything for me, which is pretty damn cool. Okay, once I'm done with that, I can then go ahead and close up that uh, disk utility. Then I'm going to open up UniBeast, make sure that the install Mac OS Sierra is in your applications folder. So make sure that it's by there, otherwise it won't work. Then I'm going to press continue four times, going to press agree, ignore what it says. I'm going to press this and I'm literally going to press continue and then it will have everything done for it. So everything will be done in terms of installing that. It'll ask you to select the bootloader mode so you can either have UFEI or or legacy I believe so just choose one I chose UFEI because that works for me and then once you're done installing that which I'm not going to do because I already have it installed on a separate USB you're actually pretty much good to go for the rest of it make sure that you have a copy of MultiBeast on a different USB drive so you can actually install everything once you've installed your Mac once you do the setup process your Mac will pretty much look like this except the applications because I've got a couple installed all you then have to do is go into MultiBeast. What I would recommend doing is going into Drivers, Audio, select whichever one you have. If you're using a motherboard like mine, it's actually the 887-888B. So um, make sure that you choose the right audio codec because these don't tend to work very well. And there's also a lot of problems that can come with the audio. Then you need to go down into Disk. I didn't have to use any of these for mine. In Miscellaneous, make sure you click Fake SMC um and then plugins and the hw monitor i used all of those because without the fake smc it won't actually be able to boot going down into the network the best thing i found to do is literally the latest versions of all the ones that you can find so literally just install them all because if they don't work it won't affect anything and then down in the usb section i did third party usb 3 7 8 and 9 usb support and increase max port limit over in the bootloaders we already have the bootloader so we don't actually need to do that and then in the customized section you can choose inject nvidia graphics ati graphics or intel different series um, hd graphics and then finally you can actually choose what type of pc you want this to appear as so i actually chose rather than choosing the mac pro because it does have to be something which has a similar processor i couldn't choose a mac pro 6 comma 1 because obviously that has an intel xeon processor so actually I went for an iMac 14,2 because that has an i5 inside of it and 8 gigs of RAM and I thought that was a pretty good match for what I wanted it to be. Then straight after that you can go in, in you can go on into build, literally choose the install drive which you which you installed Mac OS 2 and then literally just press install. Now the reason why I didn't show you through the setup process is because it's so damn easy. All you have to do when you boot up is press F12 to get into your boot menu and then literally just reboot down into the drive which you had. It'll choose it'll come up with Clover boot off the install mac os option and then you'll literally just get into the setup process and it's all pretty self-explanatory from there the only thing i then have to tell you is if you do have nvidia graphics you're going to have a couple of problems especially if i if you have a card like mine because you'll go into about this mac and then you'll see whatever card you have so you, you see here i have a gtx 950 but it always said zero megabytes for me and it would only ever come up on one monitor. That's probably the biggest problem I've actually found. What I'm going to recommend to you guys is to actually mount the EFI partition on your drive. So on the main boot drive. So I have the EFI partition mounted here and what you're going to want to do is go over into EFI, Clover and then on the config.plist um, open it with the text editor. And what you're going to have to do here, it depends on what graphics card you have. So once you go down into the graphics section, you'll see it just by here. So it's key graphics, and then it'll be inject, and it'll be NVIDIA. If it doesn't say true, make sure that if you're using an NVIDIA card, it works the same with ATI. Make sure whichever one you're using actually says true and not false. Then under here where it says NVIDIA single, and then it goes false. Under there, if you are having problems with dual monitors, or if your Hackintosh doesn't actually read the amount of RAM that you've got right, add these couple of things here. So it's key... VRAM and then it's going to be integer 2048 for me and then you go video ports and then do however many video ports your card has so I put four 
and then literally turn your computer off, turn it back on, and it'll boot up with both monitors in 1080p using the right amount of graphics. You'll tell when it isn't working, because as you boot it up, it'll have a load of lines as you log in, so it'll be like lines going upwards, and then they'll come back down and go up, and that's basically just an indication that the graphics is going wrong. If you have any other problems, go and leave them in the comments section, and if anyone knows how to solve these problems, if I don't, please go and help some people down in the comments who want to get these things working. So guys, thank you so much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a big like and go and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in my next video.